John chapters 4, John 4 verse 1 to 2. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, John 3 verse 22 to 27, though Jesus himself baptized not, why didn't Jesus baptize with water? He was to baptize believing Israel with the Holy Ghost. Matthew 3 verse 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. John 1, 33, KJV, And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. John 4, 3, 4. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Jesus left Judea because the Pharisees were getting nervous about the number of followers that were becoming his disciples. He must needs go through Samaria. Jesus also had a divine appointment with a Samaritan woman, in a city which would last for two days, and many would be converted. John 4, 5, KJV, Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Sychar, this is a Hebrew word meaning drink. Genesis 33, 19, KJV, And he bought a parcel of a field where he had spread his tent at the hand of the children of him, or Shechem's father, for an hundred pieces of money. Genesis 48:22 KJV Moreover I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren which I took a hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. Leviticus 10 verse 9 KJV Do not drink wine nor strong drink thou nor thy sons with thee when ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation lest ye die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. John 4, 6, 9, KJV. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, Askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Second Kings 17:4 KJV. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Cutha and from Ava and from Hamath and from Sepharvaim and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. John 4:10 to 16 KJV. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well? and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall, shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. Living water, the living water of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 12, 3, KJV. Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Isaiah 44, 2-4, KJV. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jezerun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thine offspring. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. Zechariah 13, 1 KJV. In that day there shall be a fountain open to the house of David, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. John 6, 34-35 KJV 
Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. John seven thirty seven to 39 In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. 38 He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? This particular well was the well that Jacob drank of, and his children, this is all the children of Israel. Jacob's name was changed to Israel before he possessed this land. And he had 12 sons. One of them, his favorite, was called Joseph. When Joseph was 17, he was sold into slavery by his older brothers, who had each been given parcels of land by their father previously. The parcel of land that Joseph was to receive was the same land that Jacob lived on. That meant the very spot where all of his brothers were raised in their mother's tents was given unto Joseph prior to his even having any wife or children. This must have infuriated his brothers. Of course, he was not speaking of literal water here. He was referencing what God said to the prophet Isaiah hundreds of years earlier. Isaiah 55, 1, 13. Jesus' word is the water of life, that if a man or woman partake of, drink spiritually speaking, they will never thirst again because they have eternal life. You would have never gotten that by reading just John chapter 4 by itself because your thoughts are not God's thoughts. His are higher than ours. Isaiah 55 was a prophecy that his word would be like life-giving water. John 4 verse 17 to 19 KJV. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidst thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. I perceive that thou art a prophet. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the broken meat that was left seven baskets full. Matthew 22 verse 11 KJV. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. Luke 7 16 KJV. And there came a fear on all. And they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. KJV. They say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, He is a prophet. John 4.20 KJV. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, Mount Gerizim. Judges 9, 7, KJV. And when they told it to Jotham, he went and stood in the top of Mount Gerizim, lifted up his voice and cried and said unto them, Hearken unto me, ye men of Shechem, that God may hearken unto you. John 4, 21 to 22, KJV. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Psalm 53, 6, KJV. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion. When God bringeth back the activity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. John 4, 23, 4, KJV. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Both places were corrupted by the traditions of men. The little flock of saints would eventually worship wherever they found themselves. The true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The little flock were not to worship God on a mountain in Samaria or in Jerusalem, 
but they had to be outside the camp just as Jesus suffered outside the gate. There they will be able to worship him while possessing the spirit after Pentecost and in truth recognizing that, that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. God is a spirit, the Holy Spirit. Second Corinthians 3.17 KJV. Now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. John 4, 25 to 26 KV, the woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. I know that Messiah cometh. This is a reference to the Messiah, the Savior of the world, also known as the Christ. This is the first time that Jesus tells someone he is the Christ and it's a Samaritan woman who has had five husbands and who is now living with a man in adultery. John 4, 27, 30, KJV. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou? Or why talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city, and saith to the men, Come, see a man, which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. Why does Jesus plainly tell this Samaritan adulteress that he is the Messiah, and yet he expects Israel to recognize him by his deeds, because they should recognize him that way, because salvation was of the Jews? as they alone had the oracles of God, his word. They had the word of God, and they should know it and have recognized him, the Messiah, immediately after he showed them all the kingdom signs that have been prophesied that he would do. They did not because his word was far from them. The Samaritan woman had very little chance of recognizing the Messiah of Israel unless he just came out and told her who he was, and he did. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. They would later be told in Matthew 10, 1 to 5, not to enter into any city of the Samaritans with the gospel of the kingdom, because Jerusalem and the lost sheep of the house of Israel must be reached first. John 4, 31 to 34 KJV. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore, said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him out to eat? Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. I have meat to eat that ye know not of. His meat is to do the will of the Father. John 6.38 KJV For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. John 21.5 KJV Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. John 4.35.38 KJV Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor, other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. Look on the fields, for they are white already unto harvest. After the woman at the well leaves, Jesus' disciples return and try to talk him into having a little food. Jesus reminds them that man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The disciples were confused. And so Jesus begins to use an illustration of sowing and reaping to get a point across to them that he had more important things to think about than his stomach at the moment. Jesus uses the most interesting of illustrations after just talking with a Samaritan woman. After having told her who he was, she immediately goes back to her Samaritan city with the good news of the Messiah. Then they return in such a massive number that Jesus compares the number of Samaritans returning with a field white already to harvest. Matthew 9, 37 to 38, John 4, 39, KJV, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all that ever I did. Verse 29 above, why did Jesus tell his 12 apostles not to go into any city of the Samaritans in Matthew 10, 5, 7, 
but only go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, because here he goes and spends two days with the Samaritans, and many of them believe on him. Jesus went to the Samaritans only before he forbids his apostles to go to them. Prior to Jesus' command not to go to them, the Samaritans were still to be reached by other Jews because salvation was of the Jews. When Jesus said later, don't go to the Samaritans, it was no longer the time to go to them. It would be time again very shortly, but only after the lost sheep of the house of Israel had heard first. See Philip in Acts 8, 4 to 8, John 4, 42 KJV. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word, and said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. And many more believed because of his own word. The Samaritans believed Moses' words, and they believed Jesus' words, because they matched what Moses said. This was not the same for those in Judea who professed to believe Moses, but in reality they believed the traditions of men more. John five forty five to forty seven, John four forty three to forty four KJV. Now after two days he departed thence and went into Galilee, for Jesus himself testified that a prophet hath no honor in his own country. Matthew thirteen fifty seven, John four forty five, KJV. Then when he was coming to Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast, for they also went unto the feast. The Galileans received him. Luke 4, 1, KJV. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If, if thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. John 2, 23, KJV. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. At the feast, Deuteronomy sixteen sixteen KJV, three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, in the feast of unleavened bread, and in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Back to Cana, John four forty six KJV, so Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. John 2, 11. John 4, 47 to 54, KJV. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, Come down ere my child die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. It was Israel that required a sign. And Jesus told them, A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Matthew 16, verse 4, and Corinthians 1, 22. Whole households believed on Jesus in that day. But in verse 44, Jesus tells us that in his own town and in his own home, he was not accepted. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. Notice that it doesn't say that it was the second miracle Jesus ever did. The miracle that Nicodemus talked about in chapter 3 were miracles that Jesus performed in Judea, not Galilee. Judea and Galilee are separated by a landmass called Samaria. We call it the West Bank today, but it is roughly the same area. Galilee was not a city. It is the region in the north. 
They all had to have happened after these two events in Samaria and Cana because Jesus' second miracle in Galilee just happened here in John chapter 4. Gospel of John chapter 5, an impotent Israel. John 5 verse 1, KJV. After this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, a feast of the Jews. They were formerly called feasts of the Lord, but they had become deluded of much of the truth they once had, which pictured Israel's Messiah and her future. Exodus 23, 14 to 16. It was probably the Feast of Tabernacles that occurs near the end of the year as God was tabernacling with Israel in the person of Jesus Christ. And because in the next chapter we read about the Feast of Passover, which was the first feast of the year, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, there were three times a year every able-bodied man was to go to Jerusalem for the feast as required by Moses, which included Passover. Leviticus 23, 1-18. John 5, 2 KJV. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. There is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool. This pool was still there when John wrote this. John was written later than Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but not after 70 AD when Jerusalem was destroyed, as some wrongly say. Bethesda means the house of kindness. Having five porches, it was a large open area with an underground water source, John 5, 3, KJV. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. A great multitude of impotent folk, a multitude of Jewish people who were waiting for a healing. In the kingdom, no Jew will need healing. The underlined portion above is taken out of newer Bible versions. It belongs in the Bible because it is in the Textus Receptus, the Greek received majority text. An angel went down at a certain season. The certain season was associated with the feast above. John said an angel stirred the waters and there is no reason to believe anything else. A certain man was there. When you see the word certain used to describe someone, they are usually a picture of Israel in some way. An infirmity 30 and 8 years, Israel wandered in the wilderness for 38 years after the incident in Kadesh Barnea, according to Deuteronomy 2.14, Numbers 32.11-12, to 12, and Isaiah 35.5-6, Deuteronomy 2.14 KJV, And the space in which we came from Kadesh Barnea until we were come over the brook, Zerid was thirty and eight years until all the generation of the men of war were wasted out from among the host as the Lord swear unto them. Numbers 32, 11 to 12, KJV, surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me, save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite, and Joshua, the son of Nun, for they have wholly followed the Lord. Isaiah 35, 5, 6, KJ, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as in heart and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. John 5, verse 6 to 16, KJV. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man, when the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, 
Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. The impotent man is a type of the nation of Israel. They were spiritually unable to heal themselves after having been so far away from God's word for so long, they had forgotten how to get to the only one who could help them, God. How impotent were these men of the truth that God was right in their midst, wanting to heal them, but they are so blinded by the traditions of the elders that they cannot be saved even when the Savior is standing in front of them. A multitude being in that place, only one was healed on this day. Why didn't Jesus heal all of them? The whole purpose of the feast was concerning the kingdom of rest. Jesus healed this man on the Sabbath day. Remember, Israel wandered for 38 more years in the wilderness before they could enter into the land of their rest. Did everyone go into the land? No. Only two, Joshua and Caleb, got to go in. This was a picture of that event in Israel's past, and only a remnant will be saved and enter into their rest in the future. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee under the dispensation of the law. Things were different as far as sin and its effect on people. Remember John 9, 2, John 5, 17 to AKJV. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Jesus is the Son of God, and their Messiah, or Christ, he is equal with God. First John 5, 7, KJV. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Since the Father, God, is doing things, working by sending an angel to heal the first person into the waters, the Son is also working, doing what his Father is doing. John five nineteen to 21 KJV Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and sheweth him all things that himself doeth. And he will shew him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. What things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. God healed one person there each time in the past, so Jesus was there to heal one person. Jesus could have healed, healed them all, but he only did what he saw his Father do in the past there. Plus, that served as a picture of the kingdom when all Israel would be healed. The Son quickeneth whom he will. The word quickeneth means to make alive. The ability to raise people from the dead proves the deity of Jesus Christ. John 5.22 KJV For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Matthew 28.18 KJV And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. John 5.23 KJV that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Jesus is telling all of his hearers that the Father, who they all claim to honor and worship, sent him. And by not believing in the one the Father sent and honoring him, they are indeed not honoring the Father. The fact this makes perfect sense when you think about it, but it would assuredly anger any who did not like Jesus and his words. John 5, 24 KJV, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life and shall not come into condemnation, they will have eternal life in the kingdom. Damnation, verse 29 below, is passed from death unto life. Since Jesus Christ is life, then to believe in Christ is to possess that life. Jesus tells us that that life is everlasting life. For a person to believe Jesus was the Christ during his earthly ministry was to possess eternal life in the kingdom promised to them. 
John 5, 25, 26, KJV, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. The hour is coming, and now is, this is speaking of the resurrection of Lazarus, and himself soon after. It is also speaking of the resurrection of the righteous dead at the onset of the kingdom, as the Father hath life in himself, eternal life. Not only did the Father and Son have life in themselves, but if any were to believe the voice of the Son of God, they would possess everlasting life in the kingdom. John 5, 27, 29, KJV, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. God the Father, who is a spirit, has given authority to judge to the Son, because he is a human being, the Son of Man. The resurrection of life, they that have done good are raised from the dead and enter into the kingdom on this earth and live eternally. The resurrection of damnation, they that have done evil are raised from the dead and cast into the lake of fire to suffer for eternity. John 5, 30-33, KJV, I can of mine own self do nothing, as I hear I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. Ye sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. John 1, 7, 8 KJV The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. John 5, 34 to 35 KJV. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that ye might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. Ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light until he began to preach against Herod and the religious leaders, then they wanted him dead. The common people loved John and believed he was a prophet, and many were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. John 5, 36, 38, KJV. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me, that the Father hath sent me, and the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape, and ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent him ye believe not. The works that I do bear witness of me, the opening of blind eyes, the healing of the lame, deaf, dumb, and those with leprosy. The Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. The Father spoke as a witness to those at Jesus' baptism and transfiguration. Matthew 3, 17, KJV, And low a voice from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Matthew 17, 5, KJV, Yet spake, Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. John 5, 39-40, KJV, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me, and ye will not come to me, that ye might have life, and they are they that testify of me, Isaiah 7, 14, KJV, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah 53, 1-9, KJV, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him, 
he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Micah 5, 2 KJV But thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. They thought they would go into the kingdom and live forever because they were descendants of Abraham, and because they had the law of Moses, they did not believe the Christ of the scriptures, however. John 5, 41 and 47, KJV, I receive not honor from men, but I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. How can ye believe, which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. This is a reference to the Antichrist coming in his own name. Had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Moses wrote of the Messiah and warned Israel to listen unto him, or else they would suffer the consequences. Deuteronomy 18:17 to 19 KJV And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Gospel of John chapter 6 The Feeding of the 5,000 John 6, 1-4 Cus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples, and the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. The past after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And just over a feast of the Jews, it was one of Israel's seven feasts in Leviticus 23. The feast in John 5, 1 was probably a feast near or at the end of the previous year, since Passover was the first feast of the Jewish year. John 6, 5-6, KJV. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. This he said to prove him. Philip should have just said, Nothing is impossible for you, Lord, but he did not pass this test. Israel also failed when God proved them in the wilderness with bread from heaven. This is where the word prove is first used in the Bible. Exodus 16, 4 KJV, Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. John 6, 7 KJV, Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. Two hundred penny worth of bread and not sufficient for them, an actual penny. They did not have enough money in the bag to buy enough food to feed them all. John 6, 8-9 KJV One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves, 
and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? Five barley loaves and two fishes. This is a picture of the famine that will happen in the time of Jacob's trouble, which will prove the children of Israel as it once did in the wilderness. Exodus 16, 4, KJV. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. Revelation 12, 6, KJV. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. John six ten to 13 KV, And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down. And likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together, and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Micah 7 Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. The bread represents Jesus, who is the bread of life. John 6.39 below. Twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves. Twelve is the number of Israel. God two times does this same miracle. God did a similar miracle for 40 years in the wilderness, and he will do it again in the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 37, KJV, alas, for that day is great so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Revelation 12, verse 6, KJV, And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. John six fourteen teen KJV, then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. As Passover was approaching, the minds of the people would be directed to the past when their ancestors were delivered out of the hands of Pharaoh by many miracles. And here they had just seen a miracle in their own day. God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, and he also supernaturally supplied their physical needs by feeding them with manna from heaven every day for 40 years. Here was this man who could heal people, and now he was feeding upwards of 15,000 people with just one boy's lunch. Surely some of them thought this must be the Messiah, their promised king, that prophet. Just before they would try to make him their king, Jesus departed into a mountain alone. It was not time for him to be Israel's king. Deuteronomy 18, 15 to 18, KJV. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken according to all that thou desiredst of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise him up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. John six sixteen to 20 KJV And when even was now come, his disciples went down unto the sea, and entered into a ship, and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them, and the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship, and they were afraid. But he saith unto them, It is I, be not afraid, furlongs. Eight furlongs equals a mile. John six twenty one to 23 KJV. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, 
save that one whereinto his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread. After that, the Lord had given thanks. The place where they did eat bread near Capernaum. John six twenty four to 27, KJV. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed, that meat that endureth unto everlasting life. This means to believe on Jesus as the Christ to receive everlasting life. Verse 29 below, for him hath God the Father sealed. The word seal means to protect or preserve. Eternal life is preserved life forever. This also speaks of God the Father setting his seal on his Son, attesting that he gave this power to him to give to all that believe on him. John six twenty eight to 31 KJV. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign shewest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Psalm 78, 24, KJV, and had rained down manna upon them to eat, and had given them of the corn of heaven, the work of God, to believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Matthew six sixteen KJV, and Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. What sign shewest thou then that we may see and believe thee? The Jews required a sign because they became a nation as a result of seeing Moses' signs when they left Egypt. 1 Corinthians one twenty two KJV, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. John 6, 32-33, KJV, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. The bread of God is Jesus Christ who came from the Father. John six thirty four to 36 KJV Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. Verse 19 above, I am the bread of life. Verse 33 above, ye also have seen me, and believe not. John 1, 11, John 6, 37, 39, KJV, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. See John six nineteen. The Father's will is that Jesus would lose none of those that he gave to him. John seventeen twelve. Of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing. This means that all who believed in him, he would be able to resurrect when the 1,000 year kingdom, the last day begins. John 640 KJV. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. They didn't care that he was offering them the kingdom and eternal life in it. If they would believe in him, they wanted him to do something for them right now to satisfy their hunger. Jesus knew this and would not bow to their wishes and be coaxed into doing a miracle for them. I will raise him up at the last day. This is the last day of the last days, the time of Jacob's trouble, when Jesus returns and resurrects believing Israel from the dead. John six forty one to forty four KJV. 
The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. What is meant by the Father drawing men unto Jesus is explained in the next verse. He draws them with his word. John 6, 45, KJV. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Isaiah 54, 13, KJV. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. John 6, 46, 52, KJV. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? The bread which cometh down from heaven, Jesus is the bread that Israel needs to receive to have eternal life in their kingdom. Jesus was clear when he was referring to Israel, hearing and receiving his word. It was the same thing as receiving him, like eating bread or flesh. If someone didn't receive his words, they would not have eternal life because his words were life, just like bread and fish are life to a hungry man. They did not receive his words because they didn't want to. Most of them just wanted something to eat and for Jesus to do something for them to make the life here and now better. John 6, 53-56 KJV Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. My flesh is meat indeed, meat is doing the will of the Father. John 4, 32-34 it was the will of the Father that Jesus' flesh be crucified. Matthew twenty six twenty six. My blood is drink indeed. It was the will of the Father that Jesus shed his blood for all mankind. Matthew twenty twenty two to 23 KJV. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with, they say unto him, We are able. And he saith unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. Matthew 26, 27, 28, KJV And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. John 6, 57-64 KJV As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The Spirit makes alive by the word. The flesh can do nothing. John 6 65 to 69 KJV, and he said, Therefore said I unto you, 
that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Matthew sixteen sixteen KJV And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. The twelve, the twelve apostles. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. This is what a Jew had to believe in those days to have eternal life. John six seventy to 71 KJV Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. And one of you is a devil, a devil, not the devil. Judas Iscariot, Judas is the only apostle not from Galilee. He is from a city called Cariot in the land of Judah. Both the devil and Judas betrayed God. In Acts chapter 1, when choosing a replacement for Judas, Peter declared that Judas fell by transgression, betraying God the Son, and went unto his own place. Acts one twenty five KJV, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. Lucifer, an angel, fell by transgression sin and he betrayed God and became the devil. Isaiah 14, 10 to 19, KJV. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain thrust through with a sword, that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under feet. Both are called the son of perdition. John seventeen twelve. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Both Judas and the devil are called a thief. John 12, 6 